Well, good evening and welcome again to evening prayer on day 85 of the UK lockdown. Yes, day 85. Can you believe it? Now, although lockdown restrictions are slowly lifting as we're still largely confined to our homes, we know that this nightly time of fellowship and worship uh, online as we read a psalm and pray together is a blessing to many of you. If you have been encouraged or blessed by a particular psalm, uh, we and others, I think, would love to hear your feedback in the comments section on Facebook or on YouTube. So please do get uh, in touch uh, with us. We'd love to hear from you. Tonight, we're going to be reading Psalm 41 together. So if you have a Bible there or a, a Bible app on your phone, then you will want to maybe turn to that now. Let's begin as we do every night by lighting a candle together. If you have one at home, this is a lovely way that we can very deliberately begin this time of worship together as we acknowledge the light of God's presence with us uh, in this moment. Let's now consciously settle our souls. Let's slow our breathing and offer our messy lives to a God who welcomes us. Lord Jesus, you once said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Lord, we pray that as we seek to obey your teaching, as we seek to open your word and to keep your word, that Lord, we will know you making your home uh, with us this evening. Lord, reveal to us your presence. Restore to us your perspective and renew in us your peace we pray amen now tonight's psalm psalm 41 is a brilliant uh, exposition i think on the challenges of being blessed the challenges of being blessed what do i mean by that well when you make a decision to be in a right relationship with god to give your life to follow Jesus and his will for your life, to obey his teaching, you are going to open yourself up to a life full of trouble. In his longest parting speech to his disciples on the night before he died, a speech that we can read uh, in uh, John's Gospel, chapter 13 to 17, uh, that's exactly what he told his disciples. In this world you will have trouble. When we align uh, our lives with God's purposes, God will bless us in amazing and wonderful ways. However, as it was true for the people of God in the Old Testament, as this psalm uh, is going to highlight to us, and for the disciples of Jesus, it will also be true in your and my life that no blessing we receive will go unchallenged or uncontested as the Apostle Peter uh, put it your enemy the devil prowls around like a, a roaring lion looking for someone to devour God's blessings will always be contested in our lives now if you are someone who feels that the blessing you have received from God is continually undermined and contested by trouble, there are some encouraging things I think to see uh, in uh, this psalm uh, tonight. Firstly, uh, and this really encourages me, you don't have to be perfect and to always get life right. David is very aware of his own shortcomings and sin. And he cries out to God for mercy and healing where he has fallen short. 
And this encourages me. Uh, it reminds me that as, as long as I am sensitive to sin in my life, and when I've fallen, uh, tell God, um, repent and seek his forgiveness. I'm not cast out of the protection and blessing of God. I think many of us think that, you know, when we when we fall in sin, we've completely blown it with God. But that's not true. And secondly, if we live our lives that way, keeping a short account uh, of sin with a daily examination and conversation with God, we can know that God is pleased with us, as David says in verse 11. Uh, in fact, although our lives can be beset by physical illness, as David uh, mentions of himself in verses 3 and verse, verse 10, maybe criticism uh, or attack from even people that we thought were friends, as David refers to in verses 5 to 9, or any other trouble or difficulty, we can know God's pleasure and presence in the midst of all the challenges of life. Incidentally, if you haven't yet seen uh, our last Sunday's Bible teaching that Michael gave on uh, unhealthy guilt and the, the, the disabling effect it can have in our lives, I would encourage you to, uh, to, to watch that because it, it's a brilliant encouragement to keep going uh, with God. If we choose to live with Jesus's priorities as our priorities, which includes caring for those who are poorer or weaker than us, as David mentions in verse one, we can know that God will deliver us in times of trouble when they come, that he will protect us, preserve us and bless us. Let's read uh, this psalm together and I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation but you can follow in whatever translation you have there at home. Oh the joys of those who are kind to the poor. The Lord rescues them in times of trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. He gives them prosperity and rescues them from their enemies. The Lord nurses them when they are sick and eases their pain and discomfort. O oh Lord, I prayed, have mercy on me, heal me, for I have sinned against you. But my enemies say nothing but evil about me. How soon will he die and be forgotten, they ask. They visit me as if they are my friends, but all the while they gather gossip, and when they leave they spread it everywhere. All who hate me whisper about me, imagining the worst for me. Whatever he has, it's fatal, they say. He will never get out of that bed. Even my best friend, the one I trusted completely, the one who shared my food, has turned against me. Lord, have mercy on me. Make me well again so I can pay them back. I know that you are pleased with me, for you have not let my enemy triumph over me. You have preserved my life because I am innocent. You have brought me into your presence forever. Bless the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives forever from eternal ages past. Amen and amen. Now let's turn uh, from these words to prayer, but let's just be silent for a moment as we reflect. Lord, thank you for all the many blessings that you have and do pour out on us. 
Thank you for the greatest blessing of our being declared clean and righteous through the precious blood of Jesus. That when you look at us as we are in him, you are pleased with what you see. For you see your son in and over us. And thank you that although we will not be freed of our pesky, weak, sinful nature until it is taken from us in death, we now have victory over it in Jesus. And that when we confess and repent, you wipe us clean again. You don't give up on us. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. And thank you for your promise to deliver us when we align our lives with you in times of trouble, in times of sickness and slander. Please help us today to enjoy your pleasure and your presence, not in the absence of trouble, but in the midst of all the challenges of difficulties we face in life currently. Finally, Father, as this psalm reminds us that you bless those who, who bless the poor, we want to pray today for our executive in Stormont to prioritise and to find the funds to give free school meal vouchers to the poorest families in our communities over these summer months. Lord, we thank you that you hear us when we pray to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just conclude our prayer together as we pray for blessing over our community and our nation with the words of this prayer. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this night and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>